Good morning. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Today is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the readings may be found in your Red Worship Hymn Book, 1117. That's 1117. Please join in our opening hymn found in the Blue Gather Hymn Book, 380, Glory and Praise to Our God. That's 380. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, you. 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. would like to invite forward at this time if you are children who would like to participate in the, our children's liturgy of the word, ages five through third grade. Nadine, receive the book of God's word. Proclaim it with our children as we proclaim it here, so that God's word will light their way and lead them with all of us to life everlasting. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, children, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, Today, 
is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm may be found in your Blue Gather Hymn Book, 26. Lord, you have the words. It's 2 6. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The Lord's rule is to be trusted. The simple find wisdom. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are true. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, And we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. 
The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now, you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up and read. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue 
looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus, of course, it speaks about that, referring to the scripture that he has just read about from, the, from the scroll that he read from the prophet Isaiah. But we can also hear that word with every single gospel that is ever proclaimed here in the church, all of it is being fulfilled, and it's being fulfilled in us. And of course, in the gospel, you know, I'll speak more about that in a moment. But in the gospel today, Jesus here is he's referring directly to that prophecy of Isaiah. And he sits down and says those words, today this is fulfilled. And I just want to re- reiterate what it is that he says is fulfilled. That he's bringing glad tidings to the poor, liberty to captives, recovery of sight for the blind, setting the oppressed free, and proclaiming a year acceptable to the Lord. All of that fulfilled in our hearing today, and of course those 2,000 years ago as well. As he said that, I am certain that everyone who heard his words had their draw, their jaw drop as they, as they listened to him. And who is this man who is saying this, uh, this profound thing? You know, here he is, the fulfillment. And how is it that he fulfilled all of this that's written in the gospel, in the prophecy of Isaiah? Well, it's fulfilled first simply by Jesus' word. Because who is he? He is the word incarnate, God in the flesh. What he says is effective. So even his pronouncement of it has its power. And of course, we see that revealed in all the scriptures. And so even as he says, the, the poor are gladdened, the, the captives are set free, and the blind have their eyes opened, it's his powerful word that opens and frees and heals. But it's also Jesus himself, who is God incarnate and who is revealed not only in this gospel, but throughout the entirety of the gospel, who's revealed everywhere he goes, he is bringing this reality into truth. He's, he's bringing it about. And we see it in the gospel that what we heard in, our, in, the, in this gospel that we heard today, it's the lens through which we're meant to see the entirety of the gospel. So when Jesus goes out and he encounters the poor, he is clearly bringing glad news to their hearts. Why? Because those who are poor and poor in every way, those who are, just, who are weak, those who, are, who find poverty in their hearts in some way, those who are really materially poor, they find in Jesus God, who, of course, we, we know is deeply rich, rich in mercy, rich in life, rich in creativity, rich in this eternal life that he brings. But they find in Jesus God, who is emptying himself. Jesus, who comes among them, is so profoundly poor. They find in Jesus 
God who has made himself brother. And so their hearts are overjoyed to welcome him. He is the glad tidings for all who find themselves poor. God who is with us all the way. And of course, he also comes proclaiming the kingdom, bringing it, teaching us, opening our eyes to the truth of the kingdom in which all the poor are lifted up. Those who are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the least. That's the poor, that's the weak, that's the marginalized. That's those parts of our own hearts that, are, that feel despised, those parts in our hearts that are weak. Here, we find ourselves reverenced, not beaten down, but reverenced by God as, we, as he is inviting us into the kingdom of heaven. That's good news. That's glad tidings to the poor that he is bringing. He, go, he goes about proclaiming liberty for captives and setting the oppressed free. And that's on so many different levels. Even on the very natural level, those who find themselves oppressed by the powers that be. And perhaps at times that we may experience it in, in the situations we find ourselves in our lives. There we, we encounter Jesus. And Jesus comes to us, in a sense, as one who is also oppressed. We look at the cross. The cross as the cross alone is Jesus. As Jesus is on the cross, one who is oppressed by the, the Jewish people, or, I don't, by, those, by the rulers of the Jewish people at that time, oppressed by the, the, the Roman government being put to death. Here he is oppressed. Yet, we look at him and we also know because of the power that is within him, the love, the reality of God's life, here is one who is unmistakably free, unhindered, un unapologetic about his love, free to love everyone even those who are persecuting him, and then free in the sense of refusing to be taken down. We, we see in him one who is totally, totally free. He also, of course, set everyone he encountered, everyone who was bound by the burden of sin, not everyone, but those who were open to it, those who were bound by the burden of sin, constrained, encountered in him a loosening of those bounds. I'm thinking particularly today of Zacchaeus, who was that tax collector, who, who was so bound by his greed, and of course that, that seemed to have been compounded, and he was rejected by his brothers because he was stealing from them as he joined together with the Roman government. But when Jesus encountered him in that very real human and divine way, Jesus encountered him, the bindings in his heart were unloosed. He came to see that even he was loved as the Lord came and had a meal with him, shared in communion with him, and it changed his heart, changed his life so that he began to empty his life of all that was binding him, letting go of all of his riches, returning it back tenfold, making himself poor, but also being set free, more free to love. That happened in this encounter with Jesus. Today, in, in, that, in that encounter, he was set free. And then, of course, Jesus bringing sight to the blind. He did that literally, of course. We know the stories of where he touched those who were blind or he raised up those who 
those who were dead, or he healed those who were not able to walk, healing the lepers, making clean, all of those very real physical healings that he did. But then also opening the eyes of those who are spiritually blind those who see this world only for what they can see physically with their eyes, or going after the things of this world that only the world proposes, rich, ri riches, wealth, prestige, honor, those things that, that tantalize the hearts. But Jesus comes to reveal the coming of the kingdom would open our eyes to the truth of that kingdom, that there is something more here. To open our eyes that we have a Father who loves us beyond our imagining. To open our eyes to the truth that those who are sitting next to us and those whom we encounter, even when we find in them the, the deepest differences, they are our brother and our sister. Jesus opened the eyes of many, and it was through him, through his life, through his witness, through his encounter, so that people could say, today, my eyes really are being opened through you. So all of these ways, it's through Jesus, it's through his life, through his, the encounter with him, and also in his proclamation. It's important for us to see it, that's, that today, that's happening for us too. And uh, of course, and, and we're meant to drink it in and to receive it. We might at times, and perhaps in a way I think we, we always have to say it, when we look at our lives, we in a way have to say, we've not received the fullness of this promise. Our eyes still need to be opened more. There are still parts of us that still need to be set free. There are parts of us that need to be, that, that need to be gladdened more deeply to know our companionship with God. And that is true. But the wonder is, the Lord is still doing it. And he's doing it right here. When we hear his word proclaimed, it's having its effect on us. And it's, it's meant to do all of these things in us. And so we're meant to, to taste it, to drink it in. But it's also not just his word. It's also encounter with him to allowing him to touch us, of witnessing him. And that's the beauty of what we are doing every time we gather at Mass, when we receive Jesus in the flesh, in the Eucharist, when he enters into us. We're, co we're coming to know him more deeply. Here he's, he's revealed most deeply as our brother, as our food, as one who wants to be in union with us. He's revealing that to us in the gift of the Eucharist. It's the reason we have that beautiful devotion of Eucharistic adoration, the devotion of wasting time with him, of soaking up his life, tasting more deeply this, <laughs> that he comes to set us free and open our eyes. It's by being with him, all of those things. So that's for us to drink in so that we can proclaim loudly with Jesus. It is fulfilled in our, in our hearing. It goes a little further, and I, I just want to point this out. I, I think I'll make this brief. After we receive we can answer that if that's God. We can. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. After we receive, we're meant to go out into the world. Right? And that the whole world. So I, I love the end of the gospel today. 
where it says everyone looked at Jesus. They were looking intently at him, seeing him. When we go out into the world, we need to be very aware that there are people looking at us, waiting to hear, waiting to encounter Jesus so that they also can say that they can know in their hearts Today, this word is, is fulfilled in their hearing. So we can ask ourselves, is it kind of an examination of conscience? But also it's meant to stir our hearts so that we know um, the way that the Lord is leading us. So we can ask ourselves when we, when we leave here, we, when we encounter those in our family, those in our workplace, those at Lunds down the street, wherever it is that we go, do people, are, are, when people encounter us, are they in some way, that it, and it, for each of us it's going to be a little bit different because the light we carry is a little bit of different shades. But when they encounter us, are they left a little bit more light? Are they set a little bit more free? Are their eyes open? a little bit more deeply to the truth that there's more to this world than just what the world proposes. That is there, do they leave seeing a little bit more deeply our Father who loves them? Have they tasted that a little bit more even if they aren't able to, to put words around it? The truth is all of us. So the gospel today, Jesus here speaks and says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The beauty of our baptisms is that we have been given that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jesus. He lives in us and we're receiving it. We're being transformed by it today by our encounter with the Lord. But that spirit is upon us as we leave here today, will the world, when we encounter those in the world, will they be able to say today, today, this, this word is fulfilled in their hearing? Let's stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
With confidence in our Father, let us turn to him with our needs. For the church, that we may be bearers of the good news to those who are poor or oppressed or ill or in despair, and that we may reflect God's compassion and generosity to those whom we touch. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of our country and our community, that they may persevere in their work to achieve liberty and justice for all, especially the marginalized and forgotten. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those members of the body of Christ who are often regarded as weaker or unworthy, that they may be recognized as necessary and valuable and treated with dignity and worth. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed reverence for all human life, from conception to natural death, especially for the unborn. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the bitter cold of winter, especially those who are homeless. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Isla Elizabeth Kachevar, who was baptized in our church this weekend. For those who are sick or homebound, especially Carol Hoffman, Macrina Sudbeck, Beverly Mead, Evelyn Mustansky, and Frankie Cruz. For those who died, especially Kenneth Bollig and Richard Mavison. And for Jim Dirks, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and compassion, look with mercy on your people as we offer our prayers to you. Grant them according to your will and comfort all those in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As the gifts are being prepared, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather Hymn Book 530, We Are Many Parts. That's 530. We are many parts, we are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share. we 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we approach God's table, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather hymn book, 589, All Who Hunger, that's 589. Oh, 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 oh. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Just a reminder, we have that additional Sunday morning Mass at 7.15 a.m., Mass requiring masks and social distancing. So if you could continue to spread the word for those who might be interested in a Mass like that. We're still looking for a few people who would like to fill in for adoration times or those who would simply like to be on the substitute list for adoration. There is a sign-up in the sheet in the gather space. Please remember to mark your calendars for our upcoming Mardi Gras Italian dinner on Saturday, February 26th. This will be a catered dinner, so there will be a limited number of seats sold. Tickets are on sale today after Mass in the gather space. And then our music cafe has changed the date to Sunday, February 20th. And then there's more information about it in the bulletin and in our gather space today. IHM will be hosting a blood drive on Tuesday, February 1st. Notre Dame Academy is enrolling for the 2022-23 school year. Registration is open now for ages 2 through 8th grade. And finally, two of our longtime parishioners have passed away, Kenneth Bollig and Richard Mavison. So let's pray together for the repose of their souls and for their families. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. As we ready ourselves to go, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather hymn book, 500, Lord, When You Come. That's 500. Small.